Good morning everyone and welcome to Suburban Stone Age. And today's video is about an old frenemy of mine, Chinese knotweed, also commonly known as Fo Ti or He Shou Wu. And I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that right, so apologies if I butchered that, but um, the Latin on it is Raynotria multiflora, and it's in the family of Polygonaceae, which is related to the buckwheats. I'm not used to pronouncing all of that because I know it as faux tea. In fact, I've had this plant for 25 years, and that's how it was introduced to me. And as I said, it's a frenemy. I love it. I hate it. It's been with me for as long as I've been gardening. So let me tell you a little bit more about it. As you can see, this plant is viney, it is hardy, <laughs> it is green, and that's going to lead me to one of the best things about this plant for me in our climate. And we're in uh, USDA Zone 10A, so it doesn't get a lot of frost here, but it also doesn't, we don't get a lot of rain in the summer at all. We have our wet season in the winter. And that's it. So that's one of my absolute favorite things about this plant is it's a beautiful deep green and I never for all these years have watered it. It somehow all throughout the year finds the water that it needs. So that's huge in our drought prone <clears throat> climate. Now that being said, a con is that it's, I have to just call it invasive. It finds its own water and it grows like heck, especially it puts on some growth spurts in spring and summer. But if you don't constantly keep after it to groom it, it will smother everything, which is good if it's a wall that you want smothered, but it's bad if it's other trees in your landscape, such as this Japanese maple that I've also had for, I don't know, 10 years. It will jump into your trees and it will absolutely take them over. So it's a constant battle. See, that is that is where I have had to cut it back after it jumped into this maple tree. It can also get into your fruit trees, it jumped into the apple tree there, and it will smother your fruit trees too. So pro, it doesn't need water. Con, even though it doesn't need water, it will absolutely take over if you don't get on it and keep it maintained. Over the years, I've actually spent hundreds of dollars to pay people to hand rip out this plant. And that mainly came about when we had to replace our fence. We put in vinyl fencing and all the plants along the property line had to be ripped out anyway. And I thought, okay, great. Chance to start fresh and uh, get this faux tea under control. <laughs> okay, that was about five years ago, and it's clearly not under control again. If you turn your back for a second, it just reestablishes itself. So, you know, it grows explosively. That's a con, is that it's difficult to eradicate. It can be done, especially if you're very vigilant, but you drop your guard for a second and you've got a problem again. However, um... I've also sort of decided that since it's here, I'm going to use it as a shade cover. So I've actually trained it to grow up and over my gazebo. We've had this gazebo here, <coughs> excuse me, for about 17 years. And the gazebo had a uh, cover that had to be replaced. It rotted out basically annually. So I've gone through and I've trained this plant to be a permanent cover, permanent shade for our gazebo. Now it does take maintenance and I have to get in there every year and really keep it in check and clean it up, but I'm not spending a hundred to $150 a year plus the incredible hassle of replacing that cloth canopy when it rots out every year. So it saves me money in that way. Also, and let me take you, all right, we're going to hop inside the gazebo and I'll show you what kind of deep shade that it produces. Okay, so we're inside the gazebo, and the kind of shade that this plant creates is a very dense, 
very cool, very foresty kind of shade. Canopy covers block the sun, but they're very light. And I have found that this deep vegetative shade in the summer stays really nice and cool. And I appreciate that a lot. Now, if you plan to do this, this is the underside. This isn't beautiful to look at. Um, so, you know, we'll talk about that later. Maybe you want to put in an underside decoration, but that's not what I have going on right now. And that, that'll be a different video, but pretend you're not looking at that. Just pretend you're chilling on the couch and you're in this really nice shade and it's summer and you watch the birds and it's just wonderful. It's really wonderful. And I spend a great deal of time out here, which I wouldn't otherwise do because it's too hot and that's all thanks to this plant. So that's a pro. So another pro to this plant is that although it is very difficult to eradicate, chickens love it. So I've also been able to train this plant to go up to my chicken coop and create shade for them. And I'll show you what they do. They prune it all the way up. They eat it all the time. They love it. And they prune it all the way up till as high as they can jump. <laughs> so it's good chicken feed. They, they've never had a problem with it in all these years and they actually seem to enjoy it and they keep it, they keep it, they will kill it because they love it so much. They graze it down to nubs. So I'll take you over there real quick and show you. So here it is in my chicken coop. And when we peek in here, if you look at the back, you can see, hopefully, but anyway, it's, it's all bare up to about halfway and that's as high as they can jump because they will aggressively eat these as much as they can get of those light green leaves. So that's a really good pro is that it's a, uh, it's chicken fodder and it creates a nice little shady spot for them and snacks. So to add to that is basically right now, this is a junk area that I've, I've broken down some ponds and I've moved them around. And what I'm going to do is basically set up um, fencing for the chickens and let them go in here and let them reclaim this area of all the faux tea that's overgrown it. So again, <clears throat> chickens are a really good way to control it. They enjoy it. It gets converted into chicken poo. So if you have the means to um, have animals that can keep it under control and help you in that way, it's a really, really advantageous plant. So all in all, that's a brief introduction to faux tea. If you Google this plant, you're going to find all kinds of references to traditional Chinese medicine. It's used that way quite a lot. I will let you guys uh, explore that if you're interested because um, that's actually why I got it. I love plants that are used for medicine, but this video is not about that. It's actually about living with the plant itself and, <laughs> and what, what that's like. So if you do choose to grow this plant, just understand that it's, it's got very strong pros. You know, it, it's, it creates shade. It's very hardy. It's drought tolerant. It's green in summer. It's got, it's great for, you know, chickens love to eat it, but it's got very strong cons as well. So it's very aggressive, invasive, hard to get rid of, um, and it can smother other plants and get in the way. So there you have it. Some practical advice on how to grow pro, <laughs> how to grow faux tea in your garden. And if you have any questions on this plant, just leave me a comment. I'm happy to talk about it. If you like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more Plants of the Week here at Suburban Stone Age. Thanks. Bye.